What's up guys? Welcome to Driver J's Garage. My name is Josh and today we are in our 2003 BMW 330xi. We're going to be installing one of the most simple things we can do to upgrade this car to a more modern audio system. Now, we're not doing a head unit in here. We're not doing anything that fancy like we did in the Yukon just yet. Um, I have been debating on that. There are some options for this car I've been contemplating, but what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and install this and this <clears throat> make it simple here this is going to be just an aux kit adapter so we have two cables that we're going to connect one to the back of the head unit that gives us an adapter to use a 3.5 millimeter jack and run audio from a device of our choosing either an ipod or in my case i'm going to be using my mobile phone so this is a pretty simple, straightforward installation. There's really only a handful of tools you need. Uh, I'm gonna hold up a couple of different ones here. So the first one is you're gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver that's to take off the radio or to take off the head unit itself. There's a couple of screws on there. Number two you're gonna need is you're probably gonna need a pry tool or two. And that is really about it outside of a drill. I've already got one of my holes drilled for this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get started. On the installation now the first thing we're gonna need to do and I'm gonna need to grab the camera here is we're gonna need to go ahead and get our interior trim panels off these nice faux wood panels here they are quite simple all we have to do is take a pry tool uh, potentially two of them and pry behind it you can also use a flat bladed screwdriver you just have to be really careful not to scratch your uh, dash or any of the other material so we're gonna go ahead and get that out and then we're gonna remove that so this is gonna be a two-handed process here I'm gonna be filming with one hand while I pry with the other so sorry if the camera gets a little shaky and really the trick is getting it underneath so you can pry it out and you just have to pry it out a little bit and then there's some pins that go across the back of it here so we'll go ahead and start prying now this isn't the greatest pry tool unfortunately and this is actually why i brought multiple pry tools out we're going to go ahead and swap to this one it's a little bit better for prying at this and it's just literally like i said it's getting off the edges just enough probably only need to open the door here to do this And once you get it enough, you can get your fingers underneath and do the rest there. It's actually a pretty nice day, so we're filming outside today. And I think we are going to need two, so we'll grab this one as well. does require a little bit of effort to get out of here. Once you get your finger in there, it does require some substantial effort and you do feel like you're gonna pop it, break it at first. Don't pull extremely hard. If you feel the plastic starting to bend, that's when you kind of want to back off, but you'll feel the pins start to pull out. And once you get one, it is actually really easy to work your way across the car. This is where it gets tricky. I always feel like I'm gonna break this one. There we go. And we managed to pop all of them loose in one shot. It looks like we got a bad one. Looks like we got a bad clip on one end here. So, looks like in the future we may be buying a clip here. And that's just the one that comes out of the driver's side. So once you get that out, it's pretty straightforward. We're gonna go ahead and there's a screw here. And there's a screw here. We're gonna get those out at this point, just to keep better audio. Because we get better audio inside the car, we're gonna go ahead and remove the, we're gonna go ahead and shut the door here and start removing screws. And to keep it nice and simple, I'm just gonna go ahead and drop those screws. into my cup holder. From there, our radio's loose. And we can pull it out. 
We're gonna need our pry tool again here for this spot right there. So once we get it off, we're gonna take our pry tool and we're gonna pry at that. I'm balancing it on my knee here, but we'll take our pry tool, get underneath there and pry up the wiring harness. And it is just a gentle, quick pry and you pop that loose. From there. Once we get that out, everything comes out nicely. And then we can disconnect the antenna. Now this is a little bit of a pain. You have to squeeze this connector right here. And then it's just a gentle little squeeze down at the bottom of that connector and we've got our head unit out. Now we're gonna need to take out some of this other stuff here as well to get to it. But what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and get our back piece lined up. So you take your black cable here and you'll take this and you'll plug this part into the back of your head unit and you'll have two spots right next to each other here. You'll just go through the open one. So, and the way I test this is you'll, you'll know it's, it, uh, unfortunately it's not coated in any way, it doesn't look like. So we do have to kind of guess which way. So then we go in and from behind we'll slip this through. Then we'll go ahead and grab our head unit again and connect everything back up. And then we'll make sure everything is tight. And now we'll go ahead and slide it back in and we're just gonna give it a quick test to make sure the aux cable works. So we'll pull out our ignition key. So there are auxes functioning and Now with any luck, we should be able to go to the music player of our choice and get audio. And now all we've got to do is go ahead and route it so that's actually fairly simple now that we've tested it out. We're going to go ahead and get all the cabling routed and everything put away. So now to get our cable routed, we are going to have to take apart a little bit more of the car here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out and start to feed it back behind and just kind of tuck it behind for now because we are going to have to take apart a little bit more of the dash. We're going to have to pull out the sunglasses holder as well as the shifter here. So we're going to need to pull all of that stuff out. To get the rest of this out, we do have to pop off the center. So we're going to need a trim removal tool again and we're going to need to pop off the shifter right here. We're going to have to pop the shifter panel off. And that's gonna get us to some screws that are beneath it. There we go. All right, so to complete this, we're gonna need to shift the car into neutral. Make sure we've got our e-brake set so we don't go anywhere. Okay, and then we're gonna have to Pick this panel up just a little bit. We're gonna have to twist it to the side and there's some screws here, 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 and here to get that off. Okay, I think it's just those two. And then it snaps in. 
and that's going to allow us access to the two screws that are right here and here to get this panel forward and you can see our holes already drilled here to run our cable through we may need to take that out and widen it up a little bit on this side but we do have a nice wide hole here on this side And then I do believe we've got, and they're a bit difficult to see, but we've got a screw here and a screw here as well to finally get that the rest of the way out. easier we'll take the trim ring out of the way and that way when we get the car into gear we can go ahead and pull off all of this stuff to try and get everything rounded a little bit better to removing but there's a clip on the top of here you can push down now you can if you were if you've got small enough hands you can route all of this stuff with ease without a lot of playing around we've got plenty of excess cable so we'll set this up on the dash for now while we try and route the excess cable down and to down behind our HVAC controls where we can grab it make sure not to trap our antenna or get overly tangled up in our harness we did get as we were pulling it through we did get a little bit of a kink that out and we'll also take off a little retaining ring on here there's a tiny little ring on here that's used to retain this wherever we choose to install it and we'll set that into the cup holder here get it dropped down behind, and then we'll start feeding it through the hole we've drilled so that we have access to install it in the front of the cigarette lighter. We're going to pull it all the way through, and then we're going to kind of feed this back down while we push everything out of the way. And then we will pull some of this back up because we don't need anywhere near all of that cable. So we'll just tuck as much of it as we can behind the sunglasses holder. Now, to make sure we get it where we want to, sunglasses holder and then we'll run it down. Now this is where a needle nose player would help because we are working down this small little space uh, just twisting this little ring on. Now you can actually run it farther in through and come out below the cigarette holder if you wanted to. Uh, I chose to try and run it in a little bit more of a discreet spot. We'll see if this shoots me in the foot or if it uh, 
helps to keep this a little more hidden. Alright, and there is our aux adapter. Now, like I said, we'll kind of wind back the rest of this cable, we'll pull it back into the dash so we have as little excess as possible. We'll slip the cigarette holder back in. All right. Boom, now we got it into the right spot. We'll go ahead and hook everything back up. Like I said, we'll make a little bit of space and we'll kind of try and tuck things in as much as we can behind. We'll start putting screws back in, we'll get everything reassembled, and we'll try it out one last time just to make sure everything is golden. And that, guys, is how you get the install done. Clip all of our clips back on. Check our cabling for our aux cable back behind. There, that push it straight back in finish mounting up the screws and get everything else mounted back up. And then just a simple wrapping into place and all the trim is back into position and we are good to go. All right, so then all we have to do if we wanna to listen to our source on our aux input is go ahead and pull out our 3.5 millimeter jack, open up our cigarette lighter, plug in the cable. And the more I play with this, the less I like the spot I put it in so I may be relocating where it is. Hit our ignition, switch ourselves to aux, and play away, bada bing. All right guys, that's it. All right guys, thanks for watching as we installed the aux adapter into our E46-330XI. We're gonna go ahead and get out of here, but you guys all take care of yourselves. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it that good old thumbs up. Aren't already, go ahead and click the subscribe button down below and the notification bell up in the top right hand corner to get yourself a notification anytime we go live. And as always guys, we'll see you out on the road. Peace.